Lesson 1. Daniel Boone and the Opening of the West Listen carefully to find out about one of the difficulties, or challenges, faced by Daniel Boone and other people who wanted to move west. Today, people from all over the world live together in communities from one end of the North American continent to the other, from the Atlantic Ocean in the east to the Pacific Ocean in the west, and everywhere in between. This map of North America shows the United States in green. You can see lots of thin white lines outlining the states that make up our country, the United States of America. However, hundreds of years ago, the map of the United States was much smaller than it is today. Long, long ago, the only people who lived on the continent of North America were people now known as Native Americans. Native Americans have lived in North America for thousands of years. Native Americans lived in both seasonal and permanent villages. They used great knowledge of the land and its resources to create a great number of villages and cultures. At the same time, far away on the other side of the ocean, many other people had their own towns and villages. These people lived on the continent of Europe and were known as Europeans. About 600 years ago, Europeans began to leave their lands and sail to other parts of the world, seeking spices, gold, and other riches. Some of these explorers arrived in North America. Imagine how surprised Native Americans and Europeans must have been to see each other, people who looked, dressed, and spoke very differently from themselves. Here, the word spoke means talked. The early explorers who came to North America were mostly interested in finding goods and riches that they could take back to Europe to sell. Many of these explorers learned vital skills from Native Americans, who knew the land very well. Vital skills are skills that are extremely important to someone's survival. Native Americans taught the Europeans many skills, including hunting, fishing, gathering, and farming. In exchange for their help, Europeans brought things to trade with Native Americans such as cloth. For many years, Europeans traveled back and forth across the Atlantic Ocean. Some Europeans were content or satisfied to just trade with Native Americans, but others became interested in starting settlements because they wanted to live on the continent as well. Settlements are places where people make their homes in a new area. The English started two early settlements in North America in the 1600s, Plymouth in what is now Massachusetts and Jamestown in what is now Virginia. At Plymouth, Native Americans helped the settlers survive. Do you remember how at Plymouth they celebrated their harvest together the first Thanksgiving in America? The Europeans would not have been able to grow the corn and squash for that meal without help from Native Americans. As time passed, more and more Europeans came to live in North America, often encroaching on Native American land, or gradually taking Native American land. Fights over the land arose. Eventually, settlers claimed most of the land on the east coast of North America, land where the Native Americans had lived for many years. The word claimed means that the settlers said the land belonged to them, even though Native Americans had been living on that land for thousands of years. The English formed colonies, or settlements controlled by faraway England, from Massachusetts all the way to Georgia. Eventually, some of the more adventuresome settlers wanted to explore land to the west of them. One of these people was a young man by the name of Daniel Boone. Daniel Boone was born in 1734 near the town of Reading, Pennsylvania. His father and mother owned a farm. Daniel and his brothers and sisters all helped their parents plow the fields on the farm. But Daniel was never content in the open fields. He was curious about life in the woods around their farm and spent as much time as possible creating paths through the forest. He made friends with young Native American boys who lived in the wooded areas. They taught Daniel how to move silently through the forest and how to trap wild animals and catch fish in the streams. Daniel learned how to use a knife and tomahawk at an early age. His father, seeing how interested Daniel was in hunting, taught Daniel how to use a special type of gun called a rifle. 
It was common for people to learn hunting and survival skills during this time in history, which is very different from today. Today, most people have the option to buy food and other things rather than hunt for these resources themselves. One day, while helping his father plow the fields, Daniel asked if he could be allowed to help out the family in another way. Father, he said, since you taught me to shoot a rifle, I've practiced and practiced until I am the best shot for miles around. Let me hunt for food for our family. Daniel's father agreed, and soon the Boones were feasting on wild turkey and deer. In 1750, just before Daniel turned 16, the Boone family moved from Pennsylvania to the Yadkin River Valley of North Carolina, settling at the edge of the frontier. It did not take long for the other settlers in his new home to discover that Daniel was one of the best woodsmen for miles around. Woodsmen are people who live or work in the forest. Daniel Boone lived and worked in the forest. Daniel began to explore his new surroundings. His explorations took him deep into the forests. He heard tales of buffalo to the west and wanted to try hunting other animals than the plentiful deer and bear that lived in the woods nearby. But Daniel was unable to go as far west as he wanted to go. Something was stopping him and other settlers from traveling farther west. Can you guess what it was? There were enormous mountains standing in his way. These mountains are called the Appalachian Mountains, and they stretch for miles, from the present-day state of Maine all the way to Georgia. The mountains were heavily wooded, making them difficult to cross. They formed a natural barrier and blocked movement from one side of the mountains to the other. For this reason, few European settlers had left their colonies along the eastern coast of North America to travel west. But Daniel knew that Native Americans had crisscrossed these mountains for years. As he roamed through the densely forested hillsides, his curiosity about lands to the west grew stronger. Daniel began to ask everyone he met if they knew of a way to cross the mountains. Where did Daniel Boone live? Where did Daniel Boone want to go? Why did he want to go there? What kept the English settlers from moving farther west across North America? How would you describe Daniel Boone? Do you think Daniel Boone will find his way over the mountains? In the read aloud you heard, the Appalachian Mountains formed a natural barrier and blocked movement from one side of the mountains to the other. Say the word barrier with me. Barrier. A barrier is something that blocks movement from one place to another. A barrier can be natural or man-made. The police set up a barrier to block the road during the crime scene investigation. Have you ever encountered a barrier? Was it natural or man-made? Try to use the word barrier and tell about it. What's the word we've been talking about? I'm going to describe something. If the item is something that is a barrier, say, barrier. If the item is something that is not a barrier, say, not a barrier. Remember to answer in complete sentences. A large, wide river with no bridge across. A piece of paper on the ground. Construction barrels in the middle of the road. A tree that has fallen across a highway. A rug on the floor.